Having complete the front gearbox in the previous kit bag, it's time to move our attention to the rear gearbox with kit bag D. The rear gearbox pretty much follows the same basic principle as the front with only a few subtle differences due to the rear wing mount. Again, this housing was a previously optional part with its additional supports, but is now standard with the 2.1 kit. Anyways, you'll need to keep the thread lock and black grease handy for this kit bag, so with that said, let's crack on. As with the front gearbox, we begin with the main gearbox housing and insert a bearing to the outside and another on the inside, before pushing the pinion gear through from inside out and placing a small shim on the outer side. We have the rear universal drive shaft here, complete with a differential coupler attached, which can now seat over the pinion body, and lock into place using the set screw with a little thread lock thrown in of course, making sure it's nice and tight. Give the coupler a few turns making sure everything is nice and free. Now insert the rear differential constructed in bag B into place. Remember this is the differential with the 5000 weight oil. With it in place check the fitment making sure it's nice and snug, adding the larger shims if needed. Again in my example I don't need the shims in place just yet, although as with the front keep them safe in case they're needed once the vehicle is run and worn in a little. With that checked, remove the differential and coat the ring gear with a small amount of grease going all the way around. Again, you don't need to go crazy with the grease here, after which it can be placed back into the rear gearbox. We can then place the gearbox cover on top and secure into place using two of the 14mm cap head screws supplied with the package. We're screwing into plastic here, so tighten enough so it's snug, but don't over tighten as you'll risk stripping the threads. At this point, just like we did with the front gearbox, slowly turn the universal drive shaft as well as the differential itself just to get some of that grease spread around the ring gear and pinion and to check everything is turning nice and freely. We can then proceed to seal up the gearbox by placing the final plastic cover on the bottom and securing into place using two 6mm flathead screws, again taking care not to over tighten and strip out any threads. Gearbox now sealed and you can give the differential a faster turn, really making sure it's spinning nice and free. We now need to grab our rear shock tower, again a previously optional part, now carrying a lot more customizability with regards to mounting positions, allowing you to really tweak your driving style. We'll continue to stick to stock positions for the initial build though, so we'll start with the shock standoffs, inserting into position and holding in place with a 5mm wrench while we tighten using a flanged lock nut on the opposite side. Note we get two sets of lock nuts in this bag, we're using the larger of the two for these standoffs. With both secured tightly into place, we'll next install the rear wing mount onto the shock tower. Again, there's some customizability here on the shock tower, although we'll go with the stock center holes for now, so with the wing mount held in place, we can feed through a 14mm cap head screw before being secured into place using one of the smaller black lock nuts we saw earlier. Install loosely for the moment in order to provide some wiggle room to insert the remaining three 14mm cap head screws into position, after which you can now use lock nuts with each screw and tighten all down, using a driver to hold the screw from behind and securing the wing mount into place. Next we need to install the body mount to the front side of the shock tower. Note that this needs to be done after the wing mount is in place and not before, otherwise you'll find it difficult tightening those lock nuts. Nevertheless, this is held in place with two 14mm cap head screws inserted just below the wing mount. And with that, we're pretty much done with the rear shock tower and it can now be installed onto the rear gearbox. So with the shock tower lined up into position, Use the four remaining 14mm cap head screws to secure the tower into place. Again we're going into plastic so be firm but do not over tighten. And yes, at this point I caved and switched to an electric driver instead. If you do go electric then go slow and stop towards the end in order to use a hand driver for the last tightening up, otherwise you risk stripping the threads. And with that said, our rear gearbox is complete along with the rear shock tower, as well as the rear body and wing mounts. 
Again, everything fits together with perfection, making for a really tunable setup. With our front and rear gearboxes now complete, we can see how the previous optional parts that seem like minor changes actually come together to create a whole new, highly tunable, streamlined and more durable setup. For now it's time to move on to bag E, so join me in the next video where we'll start assembling more of the rear end.